Hello and welcome back and we're going to continue our look at cloud providers versus NAS because let's be honest a lot of you are trying to make this decision between buying a brand new NAS from Synology, QNAP, Asus Store, Drovo, WD and more or you're trying to decide a third party cloud provider. Again we've looked at Dropbox, we've looked at Google Drive and we've looked at Amazon Drive and today we're looking at OneDrive from Microsoft. Once again it's one of those third party clouds that kind of secretly without you knowing will have your data it's one of those ones where if you've got an outlook or an old hotmail account once you try to send an email <coughs> with more than about 15 meg of data it encouraged you to store your data on a onedrive an online cloud platform um, and it gave you two gig of data for free i believe so it's a very attractive proposition i've been logged into that too long um and the idea was that it would give you the ability to access your files anywhere in the world via your mobile or desktop device. So again, lots of appeal. Let's get that locked in. But NAS to me is always going to be the better option. Of course, I've got a vested interest. I am a channel devoted to NAS, but I do genuinely believe that NAS will always trump OneDrive. It will always trump third-party clouds, but especially OneDrive, because OneDrive has some little features and functionality that I find very disappointing in a third-party cloud. I've not, nothing against third-party cloud providers, but you know, specifically, if you've got a NAS, it's great to have a third-party cloud that you can migrate towards, uh, migrate important files and folders to keep them outside the NAS. And NAS indeed lets you um, have a USB backup, you can back up onto another NAS, or you can back up to a third-party cloud, thanks to applications such as CloudSync. This gives you the ability to migrate your data, there you go, I've synchronized with an Amazon Drive, a Dropbox, a Google Drive, and indeed you could do it with OneDrive and more. There are loads of providers supported by NASes. So again, there's lots of reasons to go for a NAS. Another one of the reasons to go for a NAS, if we talked about in other videos, is to do with the price. The price is a bit of a kicker for me, because once you get a OneDrive account, and I will go through OneDrive a little bit in a, a second, OneDrive, these are the price structures of OneDrive. 5 gig is free, 1 TB is 5.99, 5 TB, but it's actually 5 1 TB accounts for different users, is 7.99, and finally, 1 terabyte of storage plus Office 365, so window, you know, Microsoft Office, is nine pounds. But you work that out over two years, that's how much you're spending over two years. And after two years, where is your data? It's still on the cloud. It's for one user, and it's on the cloud. So either you're going to have to continue paying OneDrive slash Microsoft for your data and never get any extra data. It's always going to be the same amount of data. Or you have to download all this, uh, this footage, cancel your membership and put it somewhere like a NAS. So why not buy the NAS at the beginning? There are so many things about a NAS that make it appealing. If I talk about what a third party cloud like OneDrive can give you, it gives you um, a mobile phone application or three for your iOS or Android device. It is a client application that you can install on your PC or Mac to synchronize folders and therefore back those folders up to the cloud. But again, you're relying on internet level access only. And if you don't have a great upload, because so many internet service providers advertise their download speeds and never their upload speeds, you could end up with incredibly slow backups of, and synchronization of your files and folders online. Moreover, OneDrive is just a glorified file manager. There are other little features and functions, but for the most part, it is just a file manager. There you go, pictures of a garden clearance that I did there with a friend helping out with their garden. And again, look at the state of this. You can, you know, this is what you can do with it. You can access those files and folders. But once again, that's for one user. And these devices are all similar, if not lower price in some cases, than the OneDrive option. Now with a NAS, you've got the file structure. You can go to the standard file manager and access all your files and folders here. So we can go here and access them all there and go through them. Let's find the files and folders that I popped on earlier. From here, we've got all our files and folders. We can adjust how we see it. We can do it as a line or do medium icons. It's all exactly the same thing. Go in there and load up images and music and stuff, which can all be played or a much more tailored interface with Drive. But it isn't just about file structures and file managers. What it's about is the ability to do more with your storage than just back up, synchronize, and view files over the internet. Because a NAS can be accessed over the network and 
it can be accessed over the internet. Synology NAS, just like Keynote NAS, Acer Store and more, all support. If you go in the case of a Synology, go to Quick Connect. And from here, you can set up your account for free. And I say free, obviously, you have to buy the NAS. And from here, once you register an account, this becomes your access point. It gives you the ability <coughs> to access your NAS online, anywhere in the world over the internet, with individual logins, two-step verification if you need it, and SSL certificates where you need them. All of those things that you get from here. Now, the reason it says up there not secure, by the way, is because I'm using a LAN connection, not an internet connection. But again, that can be remedied. Now, other features and functionality are as follows. For a start, of the one to two applications that Microsoft have given you to access your OneDrive to back up and synchronize, NAS gives you about 15 to 20. And these 15 to 20 applications for your mobile phone and desktop PC, and indeed within the software itself, are great for photos, great for video, great for music, great for backups of virtual machines, surveillance, Plex, the works, as well as their own bespoke office applications for dealing with documents, CSVs, spreadsheets, PowerPoint presentations, and more. And all of these are included in the price of your NAS. All of these are free, along with many, many more for backing up servers, creating download servers, CMS and CRM systems, email servers, the list is you know, it's endless. And OneDrive all this time are just giving you, a, you know, Windows Explorer here on the right. And again, after two years, you've spent that money, you're not getting it back. Now, the one thing OneDrive gives you, like all third-party cloud providers that the Synology technically doesn't, is a little bit of peace of mind on, in, with regards to deletion. I could delete these files very easily. And once I delete them, I can retrieve them from a recycle bin, or, if it hasn't been too much time, I can contact OneDrive and get those, uh, th those files retrieved. In the case of a NAS, I've got options like RAID. RAID protects you from data storage failure. The more astute of you may have noticed that in the case of this, I've got two drives. So in a RAID, one drive would work as a copy, and in one of your hard drives breaks, your data's safe. If the NAS breaks, more than likely, your data's safe. But RAID and backup aren't the same thing. And a NAS can be backed up to a USB drive, it can be backed up, let's go back to the package center actually. It can be backed up to a USB drive. It can be backed up to another NAS over the network or the internet. Or it can be backed up to a third party cloud. So if we use cloud sync there to show you. And once again, this gives you the ability to back up your NAS to this third party cloud. So yes, in ter terms of losing files, OneDrive will at least give you more ways in which you can retrieve a file in the case of accidental deletion. But a NAS gives you so, so many options with snapshot background uh, checks, uh, data integrity checks, BTRFS systems, and more for the integrity of your data and your file system. And you just get more for your money with a NAS than you do with OneDrive. You know, because OneDrive, you're thinking, I haven't got much money, I can buy something every month. You can buy a one-bay NAS with a drive for about £110. That's not even half a year's subscription to some of these services, the more paid up ones, and that's a terabyte of data whereas this is five gig of data for free and once again look at the way those prices go up they are a lot of money that's the amazon one isn't it sorry from earlier but tell my word for it now is definitely the better option if you disagree with me let me know in the comments maybe there's something i've missed but otherwise thank you so much for watching do let me know what you think in the comments do subscribe if you enjoyed this and do buy your nas from the guys at span.com and get your nas guides from nas compares thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time